The growing crisis across Canada's health care system and emergency departments having to close because of staff shortages, case backlogs. We're going to focus for the next few minutes on Prince Edward Island. The problem there, a growing uh, lack of doctors. Now we'll have to go to a clinic and we'll have to sit at a clinic two hours before the clinic even opens just to get a prescription for our son that's eight months old. That is one concerned mother. Her doctor is leaving his practice and his departure makes four doctors in Charlottetown who have left practices and patients in just the last month. It's an issue that is preoccupying Health PEI, and someone we know well on this program is the Chief Executive Officer of Health PEI. That's Dr. Michael Gardam, who's giving us some time today from Charlottetown. Good morning. Nice to see you again, Dr. Gardam. Yeah, good morning. Nice to see you. You know, th this really caught our attention. Four, fourth doctor in a month. What is happening? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's very sad, but this was kind of predictable, to be very honest with you. Uh, being a family doctor these days is very, very challenging. We've known that uh, for a long time. It's a hard it's a hard specialty in medicine to do. And then throw a pandemic on top of it and then throw a relatively rural area where it's harder for us to recruit doctors than, let's say, larger centers in the country. And you end up with doctors who are tired, burned out, they're, they're frazzled. And what really strikes me uh, with these doctors leaving in Charlottetown is, for the most part, they're not leaving the island to go practice somewhere else. They're, they're, they're leaving family medicine. Totally. And so it really speaks to this is a national issue with family doctors right now. And I want to look at the national context. I'm just wondering, though, too, four and counting, you issued a statement at Health PEI indicating you seem to think there are more departures to come? Yeah, well, we know that, you know, the, the Canadian Medical Association did a, uh, a survey of, of doctors across the country, and there's no doubt that there's a very, very high level of burnout here on the island and elsewhere in Canada. Um, we also have one of the oldest doctor populations in the country, and so, you know, we predict there will be people who are taking this moment to decide to retire. Uh, so. I, I think we're not going to we're not going to sugarcoat this. This is a real problem for us, and and truly, my heart goes out to Islanders who have lost their family doctor because there is no easy quick fix for this. We're going to have to rebuild over the next few years, but we're not going to be able to turn this around in a month. So the Islanders who are now in a real situation, 24,000 of them on the waiting list for a doctor, and this is in a province of only about 165,000. So it's a high percentage. What do they do? Where do they turn right now then? Yeah. Well, I mean, the big thing that Prince Edward Island has done, and this was done before I actually got here, is we offer everybody without a family physician access to Maple, which is one of these virtual uh, online uh, services. So people can have access through that, which allows them to get prescriptions renewed, et cetera. It's all virtual. Um, and PEI was actually a bit of a, a, a pioneer in that kind of technology. We have walk-in clinics, but I'll be honest, they're not great. And of course, the last, uh, the last place we want people to go is the emergency departments, but obviously that's an option as well. None of these things are, are, are good. I mean, one of the things that we're trying to do is by, you know, we've been moving very um, uh, aggressively towards the concept of medical homes where doctors are part of a larger team with nurse practitioners and other healthcare professionals who can help take some of the load off the doctors and allow us to care for more people. We're actively moving towards that, but again, the challenge is recruitment. Sorry, I, I want to get to recruit, but I just want to raise the emergency department. I think I better ask about that too, because we've been talking about so many provinces where hospitals have actually had to shut down temporarily, at least close, turn people away in emergency departments because they just don't have the staffing capacity because so many people are showing up at ERs and obviously with no family or fewer family doctors, that's a reality on the island as well. Have you had to respond in kind in your hospitals on the island? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have two main emergency departments on the island, one in Summerside, one in Charlottetown, and we have to protect those emerges at all costs. Um, but what that means is we do have smaller rural emergency departments and over the course of this summer we've definitely had days where we've had to close early or we've had to close them for the day. Not so much because we're redistributing staff but because we're so tight on staffing that one person ill 
is enough to put that shift uh, in in uh, jeopardy. So, you know, that's, that's the reality of our system. Yes. We have no, and on all of this, the reason we've gotten into real trouble this summer is because, is, is course, because there's been a considerable COVID resurgence as well. So we have over 100 staff off now uh, with COVID at this very moment. And I don't see an end in sight for that either. Okay. It's just an incredible perfect storm as we look at the island situation, as you've said, nationally. But island in particular, why the great challenges in recruiting there? It's such a beautiful place. It's such a beautiful place, uh, not so much in the winter, but in the summer it's lovely. I think that, uh, you know, there's a lot of systemic issues that have been going on here for years and systems that were put in place at a time when there were lots of doctors around. And so the system was almost designed to keep doctors out. We have to fundamentally reform that system and I'm working very closely with the government here. I'm hoping to essentially blow it up and start over again to make it very easy for us to recruit doctors. Right now, it's actually very challenging. If I compare what I used to do in Ontario compared to here, it was much easier to recruit in Ontario. And that puts us behind the eight ball on top of the fact that it's always harder to recruit to more rural areas. So we need to get our, our act together as a, as a system, um, as well as fixing a lot of the things uh, uh, within Health PEI to make sure that our doctors are feeling, are, are, are feeling supported. But it sounds like, I mean, we just had national meetings with all of the provincial and territorial leaders. It is a, a national system that maybe parts yeah. need to be blown up and rebuilt, as you said. And there's a lot of talk about poaching from within provinces and, and other parts of, of, of the country. So as you talk to your former colleagues from Ontario and people you know across the country, what are we looking at as, as the national picture right now? And what do you think has to be done? You know, the national picture is is really pretty pretty dire and i think the frustrating thing about all of this is that we, this again was predictable we've been living on this dream that canada's healthcare system is second to none it's it's better than the us but compared to every other developed country around the world we don't we don't perform as well and so we've we've slowly gotten into this mess and then the pandemic sped everything up i mean there's no doubt that Obviously, we need to recruit more family doctors, but the reason we're not able to is because a lot of doctors don't want to become family doctors because the environment just isn't one that they're going to really be happy in. And so, you know, one of the things we're doing here, as I said, is creating these large teams. Other provinces have done that as well. That's seen as the future. The most risky position is a solo doctor in, in a solo practice who, when they get sick or they retire or they leave, everybody is out of luck. Whereas if you're part of larger teams, we can all we can all support each other. So that's clearly a thing. Uh, as was recently mentioned in an op-ed in the in the Globe and Mail, paying people salaries rather than fee for service is another way of making it more attractive. We've already been doing that on the island. Um, we really have to look at family medicine as a whole and say what we're doing isn't working, and it's not enough to just say we need to fix it we actually need to get our hands dirty and really get in there and fortunately that is what we're trying to do here on the island it's one of the advantages here having such a small system it's one of the things that got me interested in working here is that we should be able to fix it here and so that's what we're working on and maybe practices that others can emulate looking at uh, as you fundamentally reshape Healthcare on the in the smallest province, other provinces looking as an example. Dr. Gardam, so good to hear your voice on this. Obviously, this is an issue we must keep full attention on. Thank you for the time today. Oh, thanks so much for having me.